And we're back here on a shitload of sports, Muscle Sport TV Network. Joe Pietaro along with the mysterious, no longer, Kefis. Here he is. Kefis is a sports junkie. So since I, <laughs> I need uh, to brush up on some of my sports because I'm so busy with all of this fucking oiled up men wearing thongs. I needed Kefis, so he's in the wet spot again. Well, we do. We did last week. We did the uh, AL East. Today, we're going to be doing the Central Kefis, correct? Yes, we are. And we're going to start out with the Chicago White Sox. The Disco Sucks oh. uh, producing Bill Veck uh, appearing Chicago White Sox. Burn the albums in the outfield. Starting How did they not in the midget? How did they? Eddie Goodell. Actually, for the same, but that was actually the St. Louis Browns, though, Eddie Goodell. But, but it was Vec. But Vack. it was Vec, yeah. yeah. How did he think that burning albums in the outfield between games of a fucking Twi Night doubleheader was a good idea? It's all about attendance, <laughs> I guess. The same thing as 10 cent beer night at the Cleveland Indians. Oh, yeah. That's another infamous uh, Jeff 70s. Burroughs had to fight <laughs> off uh, fans with a bat. <laughs> and all he wanted was his hat. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, the 70s were some strange times, folks. Yeah. With some of these baseball stories. I mean, the whole thing with the, you know, the Yankees, I'm still Bronx Zoo, you know, notwithstanding. I'm well, so before the Bronx Zoo, when uh, Kekic and Fritz Peterson were swapping wives. Swapping wives and children, and was children. it? <laughs> they traded their wives and children. That is true. You can look it up. I think that was like the 74 Yankees 73, or something? 73, 72 or 73. Yeah, like when Steinbrenner first bought the team in 73, there was still like, I guess he didn't like say, what the fuck? That may have put him over the top. Yeah. That he may have yeah. gone completely fucking boss George. No, that, that. that was definitely during CBS's <laughs> reign CBS, of terror yeah. in the Bronx. Yeah, there was some lean years for Yankee yeah, fans. Yeah, bang the Kiefer's. drum slowly years. <laughs> But uh, we are talking about the um, American League Central 2018 season, obviously. And Keith, we're going to go alphabetically. So Keith's going to Keith, Keith, Keith. We'll start with the. Uh, you sound like Mick Jagger. Can you hear me, Keith? <laughs> Keith. Can you hear me? Lisa Fisher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chicago White Sox, uh, a team that. Um, Kind of hard to put a, a, a stamp on this team. What do you? What would you say about the Sox? They sucked last year. That's an easy stamp to put. And this year, hopefully, it'll be better. <laughs> I mean, they just they 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 really uh, they they were not a good team at all last year. Um, but uh, you know, they 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 made some moves. They have some decent players. Yeah, no more Maglio Adonez is in the world. No, no, no more uh, no more Adam Duns either. Adam Dun <laughs> <laughs> so what do they got so, going on this well, year? Well, catcher, they got Wellington Castillo, who was actually on the Orioles last year. Very good hitting catcher. Okay. Very good hitting catcher. Um, they're going to start him with Omar Navarez, uh, backing him up. At first base, they have Jose Abreu, who's a huge, huge man. Is Probably he any relation to Bobby? No, no, no. Okay. Jose is a, uh, is, is a, was a, a, a touted slugger from the Caribbean. Okay. Came in uh, with a big high side. Somewhat lived up to his hype, uh, you know, with the power. But you know, being that he's not not on a team that 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 does much, you know, he doesn't get the uh, opportunity. The with, and the, plus, guys ahead of him, yeah. And I mean, when you got the the Stantons and Trouts and Harpers and Judges of the world, you know, a guy who a Jim Rice s numbers is going to fall by the wayside you on know? a bad team. Especially. Yeah, yeah. So second base, they have Yuan Monica Mon Moncada, who's a uh, you know. He's a pretty serviceable uh, young ball player. He's not. Uh, he's not exactly a stud. Neither is Yolmo Sanchez at third base. You know, a lot of these guys are no-name guys that they're starting. But because they're kind of a yeah. rebuilding club, I guess. Yeah, they, they traded were, some guys away last year. They have Tyler yeah. Santi uh, Salandino backing up them, backing up the infield. Tim Anderson is their shortstop. Uh, the left fielder is Nicky Delmonico uh, of the Delmonico Steak family. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know if he is, but. Uh, uh, center field is Adam Engel, and uh, right field is Avisel Garcias. Their DH is Matt Davidson. Now, you may say to yourself, I don't this know sounds like a beer league softball team. I don't know any of these guys. But a lot of these players, you you it, you don't know them. A lot of these players are young, obviously, because you don't know them. Yeah. And they all have big high sides. So they're good baseball. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're good prospects. We'll see what they do. 
Um, the White Sox are really going for it when it comes to starting their youngsters, which is a good thing if you are a White Sox fan. That's a, that's a good thing. Oh, you love have, that as a you fan. You have something to root for. Yeah, they're rebuilding you know, the guys. They're not bringing in a 40-year-old guy who's oh, saying, that kills you, know, you as a fan. You know, you see there's, there's no Roger Dorns on this team. The Roger Dorn. <laughs> Uh, oh, shit. And for the staff, they have James Shields. That's a name you know. Former, it's been around. Uh, got a big contract and didn't didn't hold it up after he had a good walk year. Yeah, Miguel Gonzalez, Ronaldo Lopez, Lucas Giolot- Giolotito, and Hector Santiago. Not much there. That could be a soccer team. Yes, it could be. <laughs> but they they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know that these you know again they're going with the youth they're going with younger guys guys that are prospects and they're yeah. really going for it. No really big names in their in their pen. Uh, their closer is Joachim Soria, who's uh, you know a pretty decent closer. Throws the ball very hard. And uh, also same first name as a Nick Center, who's not liked by the coach in yes. Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and he's not going to. Uh, so I, I would say the the White Sox are in a uh, basement dwellers. A, a, a rebuilding year. We'll see how the rookies do, but uh, you never know. Maybe they could pull it off. Maybe they could win uh, seventy five games. That that what I think would be their ceiling. When you're rebuilding, five hundred is like winning a division. Yes, absolutely. So. So let's on to the uh, ALCS champions, the Cleveland Indians. A team that's done very well the past couple of seasons. Really. Excuse me, not the, the ALCS champ, former ALCS champions, a yes. uh, team that lost to the Yankees, I'm yes. sorry. But the year before, they won the pennant. Yes. And Game 7 against the Cubs, I mean, they were right there to win the World Series. They, the they could have done it. The try, but you got to also remember, Chief Wahoo is not going to be a part of the team this year. I think that's bad luck. Yeah, that could be bad. But in this shitty yeah. division, it's not going to really change much as far as winning. It, no, I, I, th- think. I think that they're the favorites right now. When you yeah. see their uh, their their lineup, they have Jan Gomes as Jan Gomes, excuse me, as their catcher. He's been around a while. He's a quality catcher, mm-hmm. uh, good hitter, uh, calls a great game. He's got and he, he's got the guys to call it for too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yandere Alonso is their first baseman, uh, backed up by Ed- Edwin Encarnacion, former Blue Jay. So yeah. at first base, they're good. Second base, Jason Kipnis, all-star. Great hitter, great fielder. Uh, probably one of the best second basemen in the game. Made a good name for himself in the postseasons the yep. past two years. People got to know who he was. In, infield just gets better. Third base, they have Jose Ramirez, another great ball player. Stick, yeah, yeah. Uh, and shortstop, Francisco Lindor. So that... that That's a good infield. That could be the best infield in That's baseball. That's a very good infield, yeah. That could possibly be the best infield in baseball. Um, left field, they have Michael Brantley, who uh, seems to be baseball focused now, as opposed to, <laughs> you know, you know, he was, uh, you know, he's, he's he's his mind seems to sometimes go off the field with nonsense, but he seems to be extremely baseball focused now. Bradley Zimmer's in center, uh, one of the best names in baseball, Lonnie Chisenhall is in, <laughs> that is, is in a- right. You got to root for a guy with a name like Chisholm Hall. Yeah, the last Lonnie that was uh, in baseball was Lonnie, Lonnie Smith, Smith, probably. Who played for, like, every fucking team. Speed Lightning, <laughs> Lonnie Smith. Grease Lightning, I'm sorry, they called him <laughs> Lonnie Smith. Yeah. Um, Brandon Geyer is one of their bench guys. Uh, Who's the DH? DH is Encarnacion. En- en- Encarnacion. So, their infield's phenomenal. Their outfield's wise, pretty got, well. Yeah. And uh, their DH is excellent. He's going to hit 30 home runs, maybe more. That's what you want out of your DH, um, yeah. Now the big part of the team is their starting five is really fucking good. Corey Kluber, probably the Cy Young Award winner this year. I'm calling it. Corey Kluber wins the Cy Young Award in uh, for the AL. Hmm. Uh, Carlos Carrasco could be a number one on any other team, and he's a number two. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Bauer, young guy, another stud. You saw how well he played. He pitched excellent against the Yankees. Yanks, yeah. Excellent against the Yankees. Yankees got the Kluber though. Yeah, they did. They did get the Kluber. Uh, Josh Tomlin. Is their fourth starter and Mike Clevenger, not Clevenger, Clevenger. Should have been Clevenger. It should have been Cleve- <laughs> Clevenger. Uh, now another great staff here compared to the Yankees. Yeah. You know another great uh, another great relief staff. Andrew Miller, Zach McAllister, Nick Goody, Dan Otero, Tyler Olson, and their closer is Cody Allen. And as long as the Indians can get six innings out of their starter. And they're winning the game. You do Miller for two. And and Miller could he, close, too. Also, Miller could close, too. If the other Nick, guy gets hurt, Nick Goody slumping. could close. So they, they have solid arms, yeah. starting and relief. T- 
top to bottom, this is a very, very good team. Loaded, loaded team, yeah. This so is a very, very good team. I don't think we're going to go this out on a limb by saying they're probably going to repeat as division champs. I would say that, that it's almost a guarantee that they're yeah. going to repeat. It, and it's not even a slight to, to, you know, it's not saying only, only because the division is weak. I think that Cleveland would be up there with almost any division, maybe. I would say that they're you probably know? a 95 to 100 they're right, team. They're right with the Yanks and the Red Sox. Yeah. yeah. The strongest teams of the, uh, the so far we've been talking about. Those are the three. Let's travel around uh, the lake a little bit, go a little bit north, and go to uh, Detroit Rock City and see what's going on with the Tigers. The car crash at the end of the song probably is what you're going to be hearing here. Yeah. Right? They're, they're not, uh, <laughs> you know, I, the question is, do they... Did they move? Did they start moving their players? Their big guys, their Victor Martinez, the Miguel Cabreras. If they don't, uh, you know, they moved Verlander. That to me was the year. first sign. That was the first sign. You know, they, what are they doing with these guys now? They let Scherzer go. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, this is a team that was up there for a few years. They put mm-hmm. a good team together. They were successful. They didn't win the World Series, but they were, you know, they yeah. they had some good years in a row when they had some big bodies there, mm-hmm. hitting and pitching. But they let Scherzer go. Yeah. They traded Verlander, who was their guy for years. Yeah, he was their, their was face. Their, he was their Tom Seaver. Yes. Kind of, right? Yes. So, and the Mets traded Seaver. So, I mean, anyone could great be traded. Great two-seam fastball. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 left, he left the two-seam right on Cape Upton's shoulder. I don't know if you saw that, oh, that, that, that picture. I would love to do that, too. Yeah. That was, uh, <laughs> that was some shot. So, Detroit now. What do we have here as far as their they around catch the horn? There, James McCann and John Hicks. Uh, Derek Norris. Those are the three guys vying for the catch position, you know. Uh, Nothing exciting. It's not Larry Parrish. No, I like Larry Parrish. <laughs> Larry Parrish had the orange glove. Yeah. The orange catching Matt glove. Noakes, too, was a Matt Noakes, the Yankees yeah. and Tigers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first base, obviously, the, Miguel Cabrera. the Hall of Famer. Triple crown winner. Miguel Cabrera. Uh, Victor Martinez backs him up there. Second base, they have Dixon Machado. Third base, Jaime Candelario. Not, Not to be, to be mistaken. John Candelaria. <laughs> Can't <even>. uh, <laughs> Shortstop is Jose Iglesias. So Not to be it, mistaken. Or Enrique. Or Julio. Or Julio. Light, my fire, light my fire. Light my fire. Light my fire. Light my fire. They have Nick Castellanos uh, as a backup infielder. Might get to start at third base over Candelario, but they like this kid, Candelario. Again, names you're not going to recognize unless you're a follower of the team. Unless you're a follower of the team, yeah. And you're um, looking at their third, the, 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 you know, their Triple uh, A team. And right, Wayne. Exactly. When are they going to recall, uh, you know, Gonzalez? Which Gonzalez? That yeah. Gonzalez. Uh, left field, they have <laughs> Mickey Matuk. Wow. Yeah, not Mookie, Mickey. Mickey. Uh, Lenoyus Martin in center field and Nick Castellanos and Victor Reyes sharing time in right field. Jacoby mm-hmm. Jones, Victor, uh, Jim Aducci. I mean, these guys. Uh, <laughs> Kirk Newenheis is of the world. Right. Yeah, these are not, uh, <laughs> you know, guys that the, the Tigers are high on, but unfortunately names that we don't the know. The rest of the league are. <laughs> you know, um, starting pitching, they have uh, former Met prospect Michael Fulmer. <laughs> Uh, I like the screws on that one for you. I like Michael yeah. Fulmer, but you got to realize also they they did get back. They had to trade quality to get Cespedes. Exactly, and that's why they had their you know one fifteen. Would you throw back fifteen in the World Series? You wouldn't as a Met fan. No, you don't of throw that not. back. No, you, even though you lost, you don't throw and that back. Fulmer so was on the Yankees' radar this off season. Yeah, you know a lot uh, of teams' radars. Jordan Yankees Zimmerman, won. good. You know, I'm surprised Nationals. They, I'm surprised they didn't get rid of him. Last yeah, year. yeah, I thought he was going to got value. Here. Yeah, he's a veteran. Matthew Boyd, Michael Fears, who's had some good starts, some bad starts. I know because I had him uh, on my the fantasy, fantasy <laughs> team, and the bad starts he had were the ones that I put him in, and the good starts he had were the ones when he was on my bench. Um, and Francisco Liriano for what for what he has left. Wow, he is still kicking around. Yeah. Now that guy was at one time with Minnesota. Was had he's like a the Scott Casimir. Mm-hmm. Type of a comparison where he could have been so great and he had some good years. Well, with Santana but, and Liriano, that one too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you have uh, you know you have a team. Like Foma is is the ace, obviously. Mm-hmm. They have decent pitching compared to the rest of this roster, I'd say. It depends on what they're going to do yeah. on, out there in the field. Now they only have a couple of good starters, but uh, you know those are, those a lot of teams don't have starters like that. So mm-hmm. do they? Do they really? 
trying to hold on to these guys for for chips at the dead deadline. That would be a smart move. If it would I be, think it would is be. Is Dembrowski still their GM? I don't even know. I, I believe know, so. one time yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I should probably look that up. Um, Not important. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Dave Dombrowski was... Uh, he's, he, he, might, he might still He's be, made yeah. some smart moves. He's known when to throw... When to... Hold him and, and fold him? When to fold him, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Kenny. The, this is <laughs> uh, their bullpen is, you know, Alex Wilson, Daniel Stump. Their closer is Shane Green, former uh, Yankees. Yankees, yeah. Uh, so they're, uh, you know, again, you, you pretty much explained it perfectly. They're, yeah. They're... They're not there. They're there, you know. Yeah, they're going to be under 500, but they make, they probably won't lose 100 games because they have some decent arms. I would say about 68, 70 wins. That's, a, that's you, you know, know middle of the pack kind of numbers. Yeah. Under the, 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 the mark you're looking to get. To, right. to look for next year, a little something to be excited about is an 81 win mark. I, I would be more excited about if they were able to move guys and get pieces in. I don't think they'll move Cabrera. Because I mean, then what are you selling? You still and want I, to sell tickets? The ballpark, you yeah, yeah, and the fans like him a lot. You know, and who doesn't? I mean, the guy's oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's great. the first ballot Hall of Famer he's, in my eyes. Yeah, yeah, no, he's had a great career with yeah. the Marlins. Yeah. Um, so we got KC up next. Now we have the uh, 2015 World Series champion, Kansas City Royals. Very weird. Now, Kansas City was obviously in the 70s with the Yankees. They were the top of the AL mm-hmm. East, the uh, West. Excuse me, it's mm-hmm. just two divisions. And then they really shit the bed for, I mean, they were like... Since 85. They won in 85. Yeah. The laughing stock of the league almost for decades. And then all of a sudden, things started to gel. And they made the World Series Mm -hmm. in 14, and they lost. They lost. They beat the Mets in 15. Mm -hmm. And then they just kind of... Well, they they lost uh, one of their players in the offseason, Ventura. Yeah. Uh, who actually threw out a lot of guys. A lot of guys didn't like him in the league because he was yeah. very, uh, you know, he 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 was the guy that uh, that Mike Trout actually hit a line drive back through the box and Ventura wanted to fight him. And, like, almost like you can't, con- how can you control a line it's drive? A fucking, you're, you're taught to hit the ball up the right, middle. exactly. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. yeah, he was a bit uh, of a dick, that guy. Yeah, yeah but he, he died, I, I believe he died in a car accident. In, like, the DR or yeah, something. Somewhere yeah, somewhere in, yeah. in another country. Yeah, so. kind of a shitty way to they, go. They lost him. Um, but, uh, you know, what? You know, with the team they had, they did bring back Moustakas. They just signed him. Oh, they did? On a one-year deal. He was laying. Lots of incentives. He was. So he'll be back. Hanging year. around there in the market for months. Right. And you would think a guy like him would have got grabbed and, earlier. And today, yeah, it was, it was, it was last night of today, Moustakas went and uh, Carlos Gonzalez went back to the Rockies on a one-year on deal. The low, on the low end thing. So yeah. they're, 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 right. they're getting these. Collusion is working, deals. so they're yeah. getting, I mean, it has to be done. Well, it's not, in, in my opinion, it's not collusion. You just don't want to spend the money on it's somebody. what it is. It's the Theo Epstein, uh, Billy Beans of the world. Look what look what the Cubs did. Look how the Red Sox won. Yeah. They didn't have these big-name players anymore. No. They're starting to win with youth. What's his thing? And prospects. He gets on base. Yeah, <laughs> money ball. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy gets on base. Gets on base. <laughs> uh, so cybermetrics. Yeah, it it it's that evolving into we're not going to pay a guy Robinson Cano money to hit three hundred with twenty five home runs. That's great, but we're not paying two hundred forty two hundred forty million dollars yeah. a year. When I can get a guy for three years doing this, and you know, who's going to have good production and, and numbers? Youth turns into youth, into yeah. turns into youth. They just keep turning it around and around. It's like turning over soil. They just keep, you know, yeah. turning it, bare, uh, planting, growing it, yeah. taking it out, and then turning the soil. It's almost over like again. you're getting stop gap guys in a little right. bit of a way instead of long terming some of these guys that you're not really sold on. He's not a, a franchise guy where you're going to build your team around him. Right. So why are you going to sign him to a 12 year deal with making mm-hmm. all of this money? Yeah. So I mean. But so I'm glad he can went back there. It's a good fit for him there. Right. Well, a catcher they have Salvador Perez, who's you know a, 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 one of the top ten catchers in the yeah, league. Yeah, he's been there. He's um, done well. Decent for them. hitter, calls a great game. First base, former Met, former Met Lucas Duda. I Jake did Lucas, see that. Yeah, be hitting. Yeah. Uh, hitting with uh, you know with in that big ballpark. That is a large ball. But he has hitting. got a nice uppercut swing. He does. He does. If you throw the ball low and inside to Duda, and he could really give it to you a long way. But another guy with injury issues, mm-hmm. he's he's got a big bulky body. I think he gives him takes a beating a lot of times out there. Um, but when he's healthy, 
He can hit the ball a long way. Ball. Yeah, he and he's not terrible in the field. No, he's not. He's not terrible in the field. He's no. decent for a big guy for six foot five. A right-handed six, four, first baseman. Five, yeah, right. he's pretty pretty good down there. Second base, they have a combination of Whit Merrifield and Ryan Goins. Uh, you know, Ryan Goins been in the league a long time. Uh, third base is Chelsea Cuthbert, and the shortstop is Alcides Escobar, who is an excellent, excellent yeah, Escobar. fielder. Um, they have Raul Mondesi Jr. Uh, wow. on the bench as an infielder. That's a um, name from the past. Left fielder is Alex Gordon, former I, third yeah. baseman. Who, Gordon, yeah. just the, he's been with them yeah. for a long time. He, he was the, the first building block yes. at third base. Yeah. At third base, yeah. And yeah. that's when they brought Brett back to, to really to work with him yeah. and then to really go, you know, playing his position. bring the team yeah. together. He's, I, I believe Brett's, he's not the GM, but he's like the president uh-huh. of the, the Royals. Um, they have Paul Paolo Orlando in center field, who's you know a new young player with Billy Burns. Jorge Soler is in right field with uh, Jorge Bonifacio around. backing him up in yeah. DHing. A lot different from that fourteen yeah. fifteen lineup, yeah. though. No, there's no Lorenzo Cain anymore. No, there's no. no. Uh, there's no uh, Billy Butler. There's no. Uh, yeah, a lot of different. I mean. Third base, first base. Yeah. I mean, you got a lot of different names out there. So yeah. a lot of their players that they had in that short run, but they did win a World Series. Yes, and they made a and they won a pennant. So they won consecutive pennants, won a World Series, one of those years. Yep. Uh, if you're a Royal fan, you take that and mm-hmm. you go back to your sure. mediocre team Absolutely. now for a little while because they're a low, mar- a small market team that they can't overpay. They can't pay. Right. So they got to rear guys through the system, and the guys like the Mustakas and the Gordons of the world that came up through their system, they were able to use that and parlay it mm-hmm. into something good. And now those guys are gone. Yeah. And hopefully well, they Gordon's can turn still it. there, but you know, hopefully Moustakis they can turn is around. Back in the one year. Um, yeah. Starting pitching, they have Danny Duffy, Ian Kennedy, Jason Hamill, Nathan Carnes, Jake Junis, Duffy, Kennedy, and Hamill. Names you know. Kennedy you know, was a Yankee. Kennedy was a Yankee, then a Diamondback. Jason Hamill was with the Rockies for a while. Yeah. Danny Duffy's been on the, the Royals for a while. They had Shields, too, for they yeah, gave they Shields, did Shields all that money, yep. yeah. So. Quato, they had a lot of guys that uh, again, aren't Quato, there. Quato, yeah. That I aren't like there him. He's been a Reds, yeah, yeah. a long hair guy, yeah. Um, release pitchers, they have Willie Peralta in the pen, Brian Flynn, Jason Hahn, and their closers, Kelvin Herrera. Not to be confused with uh, Kelvin... Uh, Kelvin Sampson. <laughs> Kelvin. Uh, so, again, the Royals. 500 at best. Yeah. Can they win 85 games? Maybe. They're not going to contend, not, though. But they're not going to contend. No, they're not going to be in the, in the mix. They'll be yeah. one of those teams, that, like, you know, mathematically still in the wild card. But, right. You know, 10 you know, back. Yeah, you know, can finish the season. With 11 games Maybe to they'll, go. they'll go 83 and, you know, 78 79, or 79. Yeah. Um, so after them, we have the Minnesota Twins. Another team's going to be very similar, I think, going around the, the infield and outfield with yeah, these guys. I, I, the Twins are hard to figure out because, you know, they moved Maurer out of catcher and they put him at first base. And he He's became really fell an off all-star catcher, a stud, to, to a, a weak, first a weak baseman. hitting first baseman. He's, he's modeling Doug Mankiewicz. Doug Mankiewicz, Yankee um, and Met. Yankee and Met, yeah. I like Mankiewicz. Um, <laughs> great I like fielder. great glove. Oh, my oh God. he was great. great glove. Yeah. But you Nobody got dug it out of the dirt like Mankiewicz. No, Mankiewicz was really good. Good and, on Minnesota too. And he was uh, he was A Rod's uh, tight end. A Rod was the quarterback at the Miami Catholic or whatever Catholic school he went to in Miami. And Mankiewicz was. His oh, tight really? End. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting little tidbit by yes. by Kefis. Listen, I know a lot about. He's got a lot got, of tids. He's got a lot of bits. I, got, I know a lot about a lot about very unimportant stuff. <laughs> and this is and this is there. Yeah. Uh, they have Jason Castro as their catcher, former uh, Houston Astro. Mm-hmm. Um, good catcher, decent bat. Um, Joe Morrow, Mauer, we spoke about it is at uh, first base, backed up by Logan Morrison, former uh, Tampa Bay Ray. Okay. Their stud, Brian Dozier, is playing second base. Uh, decent home run hitter he's, yeah, for he's, second baseman. He's their main guy. Third yeah. baseman is Miguel Sano, underrated uh, third baseman, big hitter. Uh, Jorge Polanco is their shortstop. Um, Eddie Rosario, Byron, Buxler, Byron Buxton, and Max Kepler fill out their outfield. Byron Buxton has been there for a while. Eddie Rosario... You know, very very average outfield. Uh, nothing, uh, you know, compared yeah. to the rest of the outfields in the American League. Very, you know, yeah, serviceable but average. 
Uh, DH, like I said, is Logan Morrison. Um, starting pitcher, and Jose Barrios is their one. Now, he is a hit-or-miss pitcher. He can have a yeah. great game, or he can really tank it up. Jake Odorizzi, very good pitcher. Again, when he's on. A lot of these guys, you know, are very not on, not off. Phil Hughes, another guy. When he's on. Wow, yeah, he's very hard to pin down Very Phil hard Hughes. to pin yeah. down. Uh, their four and five starters are Kyle Gibson and Alberto Mejia. Fernando Rodney's their closer. He's still around. Yeah, yeah, he's been around. Someone's going to show him how to put the hat. It's still, He's still crooked. He's still cockeyed. Uh, and their relief pitchers, they have Addison Reed, former Matt. Matt. Yeah, I like them on the Mets. Ryan Presley, Tyler Duffy, Trevor Hindenburger, and Taylor Rogers. So this team, I think, could be second, come in second in the... In this weak in division. This, in yeah. this weak division. You know, they're not going to... They're not going to win 95 games. They're not even going to win 90 games, but I could see them wearing between 85 and 90 games. Really? Yeah, wow, I could see about 85, 87 games. Because they're playing the other weak systems. Because they're playing the weak system, and... Um, they're going to be able to beat up some of those shittier teams. They can have really good weeks and have really bad weeks. They didn't bring back Big Sexy. No. <laughs> no, no, they certainly didn't. <laughs> they didn't bring him back, so... So, so I think Minnesota... Yeah, I, I could see it, it going Cleveland first, like yeah. last year. Minnesota last year won 85 games. I could see them doing they it were, again. I mean, they picked up uh, Cologne because they still had a chance to uh, to make a wild card yeah, run. So he was guaranteed I, I, the starting spot. So. Exactly. That's exactly. why he went there instead of the Mets. I think Minnesota will be the team that the last month of the season is going to be still in the wild card hunt, still for that last wild card but then spot. They'll, yeah, it'll just yeah. All, the, the, the wheels will come off then. You know, we've yet to see... And I'm curious, because when they built the stadium, I said, I can't believe they're building an outdoor stadium back in Minnesota. Target We've yet field. to see late season playoffs, like a late playoff game, like a World and Series or an ALCS cold, uh, up in Minnesota. You're talking about 30, 20, 30 degree baseball games. And you're going to see some snowflakes, too. Oh, yeah. Because that in was why October, November, when absolutely. the Vikings played outside, mm -hmm. like when Ahmad Rashad was their receiver, I'm going back then. In like the seventies and then early Claire Huxtable's ex-husband. Yes, <laughs> um, you had like some. I mean, it was brutal cold weather games played mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, it was just. Well, look was, at the last uh, Super Bowl. I know you didn't. Uh, I didn't even know you, there was you, one. You didn't even know there because was a Super Bowl, but we don't watch the fuck the NFL anymore right here in Muscle Sports. But I heard that it was eleven <laughs> degrees out. At well, it but it was indoors. It was though. indoors, yeah. but you know. People still got to get to and from. That's true. You know, that's, that's true. No and they got to go out and drink because that's what I did when I was at Super Bowls. I drank a lot leading up to Sunday. They drink it in football events? Yes, Super Bowl parties and the like. Yes. A lot of the times me. you get lucky and you get open bar at some of these events. I could sneak my way into it with my Super Bowl passes, my credentials. They have food there too at these things? Oh, my God. I People like eat during football too? Ooh. News to me. Let me tell you, the NFL fucking fed us. Not only fed us during the game and after, before and after the game, but a couple of the years that I did a Super Bowl, they actually brought out fucking beers for the media in the media tent to drink after the game. Well, you see, that's just, that's that's to influence you. That's the, I bet you that was the George Soros media tent. You know that what? to influence your opinion. It influenced me. Sure <laughs> that fucking, they brought out a little beer stand with like two kegs and two like, you know, taps for cause Light. That thing went in like 10 minutes. It was gone. I thought they'd have maybe the St. Pauli girl there. Oh, the St. Pauli girl. With and them. also the Mets after the, um, what was it, 06 or 07 with Andy Chavez with the catch with Adam Wayne, right? 06. 06. Beltran with the, Beltran bat, on the, with the bat on the shoulder, right? After that game, the game ended. All of a sudden, once the game ended, so we were there for about a good hour afterwards because mm -hmm. of all the, the interviews and shit like that. It was a fucking monsoon of rain coming down that night in Queens. They had a big tent set up, the team did, with all catered food and all beer and everything, and we hung out for like another hour after the game, eating and drinking on the Will Ponds. Hey. I got to give them credit for that. I thought that was great. No, the Will Ponds are, uh, you know, as much as people like to knock them because they say they're not spending money and whatever their situation is with Madoff, whether they, it is they, Yeah, business. I'm sure they took a big beating on that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've personally experienced them for certain with certain things being absolute, you know, class A gentlemen yeah. and a, a real class organization. And as a Yankee fan, I could say that. 
you know, the Yankees are very, very classy and have done a lot of good good things charity wise, especially Steinbrenner when he was alive. George Steinbrenner, um, you know, his quote was, if you did something nice for somebody and more than you and that person know about it, you did it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it for that yeah, person. You do, you do, you know, that's, yeah. uh, he was a very charitable guy and no one really knew about it. Yeah. yeah. The Will Ponds are also very charitable. Well, too. good. They, they, they do the right thing a lot of times, which is, you know, that's why I will go to City Field and I will go to Yankee Stadium. I will support their, you know, their products. Yeah. Because, uh, because of their, you know, their philanthropy. Their philanthropy. philanthropy. Yeah. But you got to remember, every owner of a team, you're going to have people to complain. If they, if you don't win the championship every year, right. fans are going to complain. They didn't do mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, listen, the Wilpons, mm-hmm. I've had my ups and downs being a Met fan, and uh, sometimes you could say, that I wish the Wilpons didn't own the team, but the next owner is going to do the same kind of thing. Right. He's going to want to spend money, and then when he's not getting the return, he's going to pull back. Mm-hmm. He's not going to sign the big free agent. He's not going to put the, you know, re-sign this guy. He's going to let him walk or something like that. Right. you got to live with that in sports. It's part of all of the games. It's just the way the, it's the, way the monster goes. I, I didn't tell you this, and this, but this is on the baseball. It's, it's a side topic, but it's on baseball. I, I, Joe knows this. I went last year to a wedding in Milwaukee for my cousin, and I wound up parlaying it into going to a Brewers game. The Brewers played the Cardinals. So I wound up getting a ticket for $40, and I sat 10 rows up behind home it was great the stadium was beautiful the people were there were beautiful you know it was great it was so nice the Miller Bratwurst Park. was excellent yeah, Miller yeah. Park was excellent now I bought the ticket through their website um, so now I constantly get bombarded with emails to buy more sure. you're on a mailing list now, they right? have a deal now the Brewers do and I think all teams should look into this pay one price twenty nine ninety nine. I think it's twenty nine to thirty nine ninety nine a month and you get a ticket to all 81 baseball games. You get one ticket. It's going to be a different seat each time, but whatever's available, they will email to you your know, code. That's So you go scan in, and that's your ticket for that. So maybe you're in the 300 upper deck section, but maybe it's a game where no one's at, and you're in a lower section. For one fee of 29 or 39.99 a month, you get a ticket to every game. They but you're only you. getting one. You get one, but then the next person... So, Let's say, but if you and your friend do it, you're, guar- you're not guaranteed to sit together. You're not guaranteed like to sit together. That's the only but you know what? You're in the stadium. They should do it like seventy five dollars. You know? Give you a little break on the second ticket and get two tickets. And get two tickets. But that's but a good deal, though. Good. I mean, that's great. That's real marketing. Yeah. That's real marketing. You know? Yeah. And that's that's smart, especially because they're not, uh, you know, a big time team you know, anymore. And, and you who know? wouldn't do that? Because even if I can't make all eighty one games, I'm going to pay that twenty nine ninety nine a month, and maybe I'm going to make. Forty out of the eighty-one games, and you still or twenty, and it's. it's but think well about if you bought those cover price, right? You get fucking ripped. So yeah. that's yeah, that's a good deal, and uh, so it almost sounds like a, like a Long Island Ducks kind of thing. It, it is. sounds so it, good. It does. It, yeah, it sounds too good. But yeah. any Brewer fans, make sure you follow that advice from Muscle Sports Mag's owns Kieferless. I always add s's to things. Kieferless. This, 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 this. <laughs> so that's gonna do it for us on this episode of a shitload of sports. I want to thank Kiefer for taking the wet spot once again and guiding me My through. Pleasure. Obviously, I, you can, as you can see, Kiefer did a lot more of his fucking studying than I did. I spent too much time in the bathroom looking at old Playboy magazines. <laughs> but we will continue with the AL West on the next episode, and then. It's off to the senior circuit for an NL preview, division by division. A lot of bunting, a lot of sacrifices. A lot of sacrifice. That's base. That's season. the way I like baseball. The pitcher hits. I like. That's my old style. I'm old fashioned. But that's gonna do it for us on this episode. Make sure you you can subscribe to the magazine. Thirty two bucks a year, free shipping, United States. MuscleSportMag.com/slash subscribe, and we shall see you next time. Take care.